got a groovy kind of love. Hi everybody, it's Cynthia. Welcome to The God Place. Don't worry about a thing, cause every little thing's gonna be all right. Victoria, do you have a song for us this morning? What the world needs now is love, sweet love. And no, not just for some, but for everyone. <laughs> Joan, how about you? When I wish upon a star, <laughs> makes no difference who you are. Our dreams come true. I love that. Okay, this is a great way to open with music because that's my theme, to heal the world with music. And today, we are gonna be talking about what it is to be a free spirit. So I'll start and we'll go around. To me, being a free spirit means that my mind is my mind, that my actions are my actions, and I am not worried a little bit what people think about me. <laughs> not a little bit, because there was a time when I did. I wanted everybody to like me. Please like me. Please like me. And then I started going to Toastmasters, started getting evaluated, and realized that people sometimes just don't like you. And that's okay. As long as you like yourself, it's okay. <laughs> so to me, a free spirit means not caring at all what other people think about you, because this is how you can find your tribe. If they don't like you, you probably don't want to be in their tribe anyway. Go find people that like you, people that like to smile, people that like to sing. That's my tribe. How about you, Victoria? That's so fun. And that reminds me of something I taught my kids when they were little. I used to tell my daughter, don't worry about being different. Be yourself and the people who are like you will find you. And so for me, being a free spirit, I'm going back to when I was a kid. I, I was a free spirit. The, the girls weren't allowed to do anything fun. And I'm not kidding. I, this religious cult I grew up in, the boys got to do all the fun things. I was a free spirit. I did not like doing girl stuff. I was always out doing the boy stuff. I was digging in the mud and playing with frogs and climbing <laughs> trees. <laughs> and I hated wearing dresses. I did. I was a free spirit. They called me rebellious. They called me a bad influence. I got labeled <laughs> all these things when I was a kid because I was so different and I refused to play by their rules. Now, as I'm older, it's so funny you bring up Toastmasters because Toastmasters did wonders for my self-esteem. I stopped, I started being able to recognize that other people's criticism was just feedback and I can accept their feedback or not. And I most of the time don't really, great, give me your feedback. I appreciate feedback. All feedback is good feedback, but it doesn't mean I have to take ownership of it. That's right. So for me now being a free spirit is, <laughs> I came out of the spiritual closet a couple of years ago and <laughs> I'm not going back in. I locked the door behind me so I can't go back in. I'm a free spirit. I'm here to teach what I'm here to teach. And if people don't like me, that's okay. It's not their path. It's not, not their, I, I, I am here to teach who I am guided to teach. Yeah. And I'm here to speak what spirit source God tells me to teach. And so I'm just me. And the one thing I wanted to share really quick is there's a difference between, because my kids ask me this, what's the difference between not caring what other people think and not caring about other people? I think it's really important to make that distinction. I don't care what other people think about me because I am so good with who I am as a free spirit. And I still care very much about other people. So I think it's really important for people to understand that distinction. The more of a free spirit you become, the less you care about what other people think. But in the same token, you also begin to care more about other people. Exactly. That's really well said. Thank you. How about that you, well Joan? Said. First of all, I have to say, Victoria, that is very, very well said. Yeah. And I love that. And a free people, you know, as a little girl, I ran away around three years old because 
my dad was extremely controlling and I didn't like being told what to do. So I always grew up sort of wanting to be a free people. But for a long time, I sort of followed, I did, I, I sort of was afraid to be me until I'd say the last 15 years, ever since I became Joan of Angels. And then I kind of stepped at the last 10, 15 years have really been about my own personal truth. And as my own personal truth, I realized not only am I a free being, that I talk to people about how to be free and how to live your truth, live your purpose, live your mission. And you can't live that unless you are free inside to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I call it the tribal mentality. And it's really important, you know, that term tribe, find your tribe that's gotten more and more popular now. Because... To survive instinctively, we don't want to be kicked off the island like they do in Survivor. We need the tribe to survive. But now there are so many different tribes that you can hook into. So that feeling of judgment, like let's go back to the days of the Colosseum in Rome when people would do this thing, this you know, to decide whether you live or not. And they had some kind of egotistical power thinking that they had control, that they could call it down whether you live or die, which a lot of people say, really, that's up to God, you know, but they would do this thing. And it goes all the way back there. But now that we're going into this new age and we understand that we are all one, this great awakening. We are all one. I was thinking about our differences with different races the other day. I want to share this with you. And then I'd like to get your opinion on this. I thought, you know, it comes down to really other races, Asian, Asian we're, we're Caucasian, although I have Hispanic background on my mother's side. I look Caucasian, right? And then there's black Asian and there's the um, India, that beautiful copper skin, right? Okay. But we all have hearts that are red. Our insides are pink. Our, we all have two eyes and nose and a mouth, two ears, hair, neck, 10 fingers, 10 toes, and go all the way down. So what's the real difference? The only real difference is the same as when you see two teams on a soccer field and one's got blue shirts on and one's got green shirts on. And that's the only difference between human beings. Yet there's so much chaos or has been chaos by this race thing that I really feel is going to be completely gone within the next hundred years at some point. It's going to be completely gone. What do you mean racism? What was that? Because there's so much intermixing now because we have boats and planes and all kinds of things, right? Where before it wasn't like that. And it really just boils down to like Jersey <laughs> on a soccer field because we are 99.999% the same. And I feel in my heart that all human beings want love and peace and enough just enough you don't have to have more than somebody or feel bad about yourself because you have less than people all you need is enough what do you think about that victoria i think that's exactly what i would agree with i i it's kind of like how we make all these judgments on someone based on the the, like you said, the costume you're wearing, the shade of your skin, the, the, the label of your gender, whatever it is. So all of those, all of those labels were created to keep us divided from find, from not being able to really understand how underneath this surface, we're all exactly the same. We are. And, and, and whatever the label is, eventually one of the, one of the insights I started getting a few years ago is that we would start micro labeling everything. So we're going to micro label everything until the labels completely disappear. Yeah. 
So we're experiencing that micro labeling right now. The other thing is that all of these narratives about, about right, wrong, good, bad, white, black, male, female, old, young, all of those were created to keep us divided and conquered. And if once we enough of us recognize, oh, huh, these are all false narratives attempted to keep us under control, we'll start to unify and realize how completely ridiculous all of these judgments are toward each other. The other thing I wanted to mention about the, tri the tribes and tribalism, if we go back to, you know, the way that human beings survived on the on the fields with the lions, if you will, when people say, how is it that human beings survived? Well, we survived because we unified, specifically because we unified. That's one thing that is unique to human beings is that we come together in unification. And when we work together, we can survive just about anything. What's been happening lately is that the tribes have been pitted against each other. Rather than unifying, we're experiencing tribalism. And so it's really, really important for people to understand that being a part of your tribe doesn't mean that my tribe's better than your tribe. What it just means is that this is a group of people that I feel most comfortable with. And I can see with really clear open eyes that that tribe over there is just as wonderful as we are. And we yes. work together to make things happen. Yeah. So we have to stop seeing each other as my tribe's better than your tribe. Your tribe's taking from my tribe. That's all just a tribalism narrative attempting to keep us fighting amongst ourselves. When we understand that no tribe is better than another tribe, right. when we start, well, it's like I'm here, I'm seeing like trading goods and services. My tribe has peas and tomatoes right. and your tribe has bread and cheese. How about we get together and we share? And we and have then a both tribe survive, right? I love so that. Think about that. I How love that. We, we can still have the people that we feel most comfortable being around with because we have similar beliefs or we have similar propensities, you know, like the artist communities, uh -huh. people join their tribe of artist communities because that's where they're more comfortable. You might have somebody who joins a tribe of, of um, computer specialists, right? Because that's where they're the most comfortable. That's why you have a bunch of people who go get jobs at Google because that they're techie, right? So mm -hmm. It isn't about one tribe being better than another one. It's about how can we be in our tribe and feel really wonderful about the tribe we're in and, and then also recognize the value that all the other tribes bring to the whole experience. Absolutely. What do you think about that, Joan? My well, you know, so interesting, such a complex issue. Well, and I agree that, that rather than the fact that we celebrate all the diversity on the planet, which might be, go like, you know, you're a mulatto with a little bit of Asian and a touch of Chinese and a and a whole lot of, of Inca and Aztec. And then we would be celebrating that, oh my God, that palette that we are of all of those traits. So number one, we got it all wrong. Okay. It's about time to celebrate every aspect of us. But also, you know, this morning some article came across my desk about about um, slavery in Africa. And how it was the blacks that enslaved the blacks? Right. You know, so in different parts of civil times, the blacks enslaved the whites, the whites enslaved the blacks, the Chinese, the whites. We all have tried to exert control over everyone. But what's happening now that I kind of feel is also the attempt to use this quote racism as a way to increase victimhood and to blame and, oh, yeah. and blame others for well you know i'm a, I'm this race or that race and a hundred years ago you shamed me and now we'll never be so there's a there's a story of the victimhood that that still needs to be shifted because in truth we have all played all these different roles we live on a tough planet and if we would come together like just like victoria is saying we can really excel. And yes, humans like to be with people they f feel familiar with. My soul family is going to be, you know, brothers and sisters to me and not everyone else that I meet. But that doesn't mean they're not part of my extended family. Does that make sense? Sure. Absolutely. You know, I was at a camp for kids. I, I do music for kids. And there were these two boys fighting, this little black boy and this little white boy were fighting. And the black boy was just so angry. And I went over and said, all right, stop. I broke it up. I said, what happened? What happened? And the little black boy said, he just called me black. And I said, 
you are black. And it, that's awesome. I love black people. I love black people. I love their culture. I love their music. You are awesome. What the, he doesn't know any better. He doesn't know how awesome you are. That's, that's how I handle that. Because I've come to realize that as long as you are keep making excuses for different races, you are enhancing white supremacy. Like, and I realized this when they took the Chihuahua out of the Taco Bell commercial because it's like too Mexican. And yeah, what's wrong with that? What is the wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with that. I love tacos. I love enchiladas. <laughs> I love chili rellenos. I love Mexican culture. The color, the, the, the dance. When we start appreciating other people's culture for what they are and make them proud of who they are, and what they are. That's what we need to do. Tell me about, uh, uh, I, I, <laughs> everything's going in my head at once. We used to go, when we lived in Nashville, my husband grew up with, in a rural area in Kentucky with black and white. His best friend was black, but couldn't play on the football team way back in those days. But he ended up start going to black church. He said, you want to feel the Holy Spirit, go to a black church and listen to them sing. Said it will put chills up your spine. So we started doing that in Nashville, Tennessee. We started going to black church. It was fun, really, really fun. So when we say, you know, you're different, but I love your costume. I love your food. I love your customs. I love that. And get rid of this holy you know, making, oh, they can't help it. They were born like that. Let's pretend that they're not like that. And we'll just, um, that's ridiculous. Oh, they can't help. They're not white. Well, you know, stop it. Make them proud of who they are and what they are. Exactly. What do you think about that, Victoria? Well, I, yeah, I completely agree. And I'm thinking about what Joan said as well. So, and I really started to notice this a couple of years ago, that these narratives are really keeping people disempowered. The more you can keep people stuck in victimization and blame against another group of people, it actually disempowers people. So victimization is disempowering. Instead of teaching people how to empower themselves, they're teaching people how to stay victim. And as long as you can keep people in victim, you can keep them under control. You right. keep them small, you keep them disempowered, you keep them feeling less than, and they're much easier to control. So the narrative that's out there does not want, again, this goes back to, this isn't about white supremacy. I mean, we're all white, right? I mean, and we all had really different upbringings. I, I had, an, a, my upbringing was just as hard as any street upbringing sure. for a little white girl, right? I mean, the, the, the amount of trauma I experienced growing up, but if that doesn't get talked about, then if you don't hear people talk about how hard it is to grow up in trailer trash, how hard it is to grow up in a religious cult, right. that's stuff people talk about. And you know what? I don't care because I'm not going to hold myself in victimization. Right. I refuse to blame my childhood circumstances for who I am now because I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. I got myself out of there and I did what needed to be done for me to be where I am today. And there, right. And there are a lot of people from every race and every cultural who will say exactly the same thing to say, stop playing this blame game because they recognize I have multiple black friends and they're saying the same thing. Stop playing us as victims because we know what's really going on here. And we know that victimization is keeping us disempowered empower our kids to lift themselves up and out of the old story. We got to stop holding each other, blaming each other for our issues, blaming each other for the past. None of us can do anything about our past other than learn from it. The entire reason the past exists is to learn from it. So let's stop rehashing the old stories, learn from them right, and do something better now that we know better we can do better so let's do better 
You're right. But, you know, we also have to beware and be cautious of the victim control drama. Oh, yeah, it's a victim control story. Yeah, that's being because, yeah. yeah, because when a victim, when they learn that if I say, you know, I, you know, this happened to me and they get that attention, they won't let go of their victimization. They don't because they keep getting a, they keep getting attention by calling themselves a victim right and so it's because they, they, it's because they don't understand how incredibly empowering self-responsibility is exactly it's, it's really hard to grasp because in the beginning self-responsibility seems so hard but when you really grasp it you're like oh my gosh this is so liberating right exactly how about you joan what do you think about that and what are we actually talking about we're talking now? About, we're talking about how how the whole race thing, how they play into the victim drama, uh, how that happens with the victim drama and how to overcome the victim drama. You know, in a bigger world view, okay, we all come in here with a mission, a purpose, a reason. We come in with our soul families. We come in with with an understanding of where we're going to go and what we're going to do we're divide and we're put into families you know we're put into these tribes and it's all about us learning you know we could have ended up this lifetime indigenous in south africa we wouldn't even be on zoom okay it's just it's just the karmic lessons that we came in that were these three beautiful women on on zoom today that that's this body that actually almost is irrelevant except in words of today just so you know because from that bigger view, we're actually just, we're vibration. Yes. But again, we all came in to learn lessons. So victimhood, responsibility, being right, being wrong is all part of, of this evolution we're learning as humans to step out of our lower frequency, low level mankind to the humankind, the godlike mankind that can step up here, sit and look beyond and go, oh my God, look, we have a full house today. We have every color in the rainbow right. in our party. Like that's amazing. Right. You know, and honestly, if we could see ourselves from up here and look down, they'd be laughing because, because each culture in each color comes in with its own strengths, its own qualities that are superb if you would love on them and use them you know maybe we're, that's why we're all different so i say we should celebrate it we need to find every different color and race and have them in one big gathering so we can just start and that's where all of our roots come from it's like this big uh -huh. gathering of the tribe because that's where our roots were right that's yeah. what I think. I just love costumes and traditions and traditional dance and traditional music and traditional food and sharing those cultures. Kind of like when you go to Epcot Center, maybe. I think I haven't been there yet, but something like that. You know, I had, I had five different foreign exchange students come stay with us just so my children could experience somebody from another culture. You know, I, I loved doing that. They talked different. They ate different. They had different habits. And we learned from each other. And we loved each other. We had Ecuador. We had Switzerland. We had England. We had France. And it was, it was a lot of, it was a, an educational experience for the kids. It was really great. So um, everyone having exchange students last year, a couple of years, I've been privileged to have groups from China, Chinese uh, teenagers. And it, it's really amazing to see how the cultures are different. Because, you know, the government has its wars, but we have people to people, people. you know, and it's that people to people, which is so fascinating to be with. I mean, these Chinese teenagers taught me so much about the difference in our cultures you know that like as americans we're up front we speak out you know we're but they're not you know and just even trying to teach it was great experience right. so well i th i think it would be a pretty boring planet <clears throat> if yeah. everyone was like me exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or look like look, look at all the minions remember you know that despicable me and those is, it, is that where all the minions are you're right yeah and they I mean, that would not be as 
interesting if we all looked the same and talked the same and ate the same. Viva la différence, as the French say. I, I think, and I, we're going there. I think we're going there. I think war is a primordial idea. It's not supported by the masses. It is not supported. Love is. We were on the right track. Remember, Joan, we've been talking about being that hippie understanding of peace and love, you know, no war. <laughs> I think we're headed that way. And I think we need to have more podcasts like this with conversations like this instead of the gloom and doom and the ugly and the darkness that we're getting exposed to. No, that's not who I am. And that's not who you are or Absolutely. I'm the light and and I'm going to shine it as bright as I can, and that will extinguish the darkness. Right, Victoria? What, what are you thinking? I can Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because I'm seeing the, the light, and I'm being reminded that the, the, light is, the light is actually not just white, right? I mean, if you think about that, the light is actually a spectrum of every color. Every color. Let's bring that. I mean, you know, when you were saying rather than trying to make everyone the same, which is what it feels like, let's just make everybody the same. Why would we want to all be the same? I, again, like Joan said, what a boring place would this be if we were all the same. <laughs> we all looked the same Very and boring. we all dressed the same and we all ate the same food and we all, seriously, let's celebrate our uniqueness and celebrate our differences and the, I mean, my favorite, one of my favorite things in the world is trying new food. If I haven't tried it, I'll try anything twice. I tell people I'll try anything twice. If I don't like it after two times, then I probably won't try it again. Right. <laughs> but I love, love new cultures and new foods and yes. meeting new people. And, and why would we not celebrate our uniqueness? Right? It's wonderful that we live on a whole planet where we get to experience such an incredible diversity. Let's love that. It's fun. It's great. And, it's and, great. and celebrate that. And instead of being told, this is what we have to eat and this is what we have to wear and this is what we have to watch and this is, bleh. and if you don't, <laughs> if you don't, then you then you don't fit in our tribe, right? Which is something that we're seeing on mainstream media a lot. Is well, and, then, and, then, yeah, and then tribes, is, like I said, my tribe's better than your tribe. And if you, if you don't, if you don't like all these things, you don't get to be a part of our tribe. I'm just so over that. Right. No, I, I was telling, I've been, I've been saying how someone was saying, I had this conversation a few weeks ago, someone was complaining that someone was taking their tribe. I'm like, well, for starters, nobody owns anybody else. So right. nobody actually has the right to call anyone their tribe. Right. So, we're on the we're all in this to human we are together we are let's get it together and build it together i got i was accused of being a tree hugger the other day i said what are you some oh. kind of tree hunger because i had said something about peace because they these people were arguing at a check stand and i said hey peace and one of them said are you some kind of tree hugger? And I said, as a matter of fact, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that. Actually, yes, I do go outside and hug trees. I do. I have this beautiful <laughs> oak tree in the backyard. I love that tree. And, and I do hug my tree. Any other questions? Right. And that's what I call being a free spirit. Absolutely. When you know that somebody's going, nye, 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 and you go, mm, this is what I am. This is who I am. And so I want to chime in on the subject. <clears throat> um, and, and I, you know, there's a lot of people who are afraid to block, block, step out of the box and who are afraid to break free. It's a cookie cutter. Uh, one, one slot fits all, one treatment, one food, one, one slogan, one everything. And, and people are lining up for that. I will say this. People are lining up to be the same as other people. And, and quite shocking to me, but I have this beautiful woman over who, who really has been breaking free of her Catholic, her, her religious programming, which did so much to stamp out her individuality. And even just the anxiety attacks a person feels in breaking free from programming. I want to just 
comment on it because because you the three of us have celebrated our individuality for a long time there's those who are going to be listening to this who are just learning that it's okay to be you and by the way the the male patriarchy has put a cork in most of our throat chakra making it impossible to speak your truth for centuries so so that to be free is to take out that cork and to really look around with new eyes and and to accept that yeah it's it's different than being like everyone else you're which is also going towards a new ai mentality you know we're all going to be a hive mentality no we're not 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 me I'm a unique individual soul here with my unique individual expression with my unique individual friends. And we welcome all unique individuals. Because that's what we are. And we love you. I want to get t-shirts that say, I love you anyway. And, uh, and then I also want to get the other t-shirt says, love me anyway. <laughs> You know, it's this whole look up, don't look up, don't look down mentality. And God forbid you should look right when you've been told to turn left. I can't live in rules anymore. I was never a good rule follower. And honestly, I don't think our souls were meant to be enslaved in those ways. I really think we were meant to express our individual unique expression. Absolutely. Regardless of race, color, or creed, as long as you're not harming or inflicting Right. on others absolutely I was, so I, was, it is. I, I, yeah. love, I love little toddlers i love watching little toddlers because I, I think i'm even envious of little toddlers because they can be naked and run away around and just squealing and laughing and i thought i want to do that <laughs> Right. Now, if you were to run around, you'd go, oh, my God, I'm naked. And Who's going to look at me? Who's going to judge me for this naked? What are they going to think? Am I too fat? I mean, actually, actually, lost our innocence. actually, I want to comment on that because uh, I've been going to the beaches in Florida and a lot of people there have let go of that. I'll just put it that way. And I was having a conversation with my friends from Brazil. And they said, oh, that's how it is in Brazil, too. Women of all ages, men of all ages, wearing thongs, just feeling this is my body, here it is, and here we go. And instead of that feeling of being judged, I remember growing up at the beach in Redondo, where Victoria is now, we would get our suntans at one beach and then go to the popular beach after we got our suntans. <laughs> we used to do that kind of thing three days down at avenue g right before you go down to Nafia, where everybody was hanging out so um it's funny how especially teenagers really struggle with that you know with their identity and who they are mm -hmm. and what they're doing and isn't it great that we're at an age right now that we can define ourselves and say i love me i just love me and I love you because I love me. <laughs> That's right. I love that. I want to add something. You know, we all have a soul purpose. And even the kind of body we get has to do with our soul purpose. Uh -huh. You know, we get the right body. We come in with the exact right body for us to do what we're supposed to do. The right species, the right gene. You know, all those qualities we have are exactly for our, our work here. So... It's kind of interesting to see that people want to change it or judge it or, you know, I'm going to victim up, be victim because I came in with this body. You came in with this body to learn how to use it and to be empowered with it and do your work with it. And it's going to give you everything you need. It's the right body. It is. It for is. You. Yeah. And that's, I think that that's one thing that's kind of hard for people to grasp. And once we get it, it's like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. I actually chose this body. I chose this body. I chose the crappy cult. Sorry. I chose the cult that I grew up in. I'm not call it names. <laughs> it's okay. I chose my parents. I chose the dogma. I chose that. Nobody chose that for me, but me. I came in with a life plan. Yeah. Have did. a really painful experience as a child so that I can be who I'm here to be now. When we really understand that we 
on a soul level chose our family and chose our circumstances and chose our environment because there were lessons that we wanted to learn so that we could be who that we're here to be mm-hmm. or because our souls have a purpose for being here. Nobody's here by accident. I know there are people who think they are, but on a soul level, nobody's here by accident. We chose this. Yes, we did. Because on a soul level, there's a reason for it. Yes, we so did. If we can get past all of the blame and resentment and judgment about the story and come back to the truth, the, the personal power of the truth is, oh, I chose this for a reason. Now, what is the reason I chose this for? Mm-hmm. And just if it goes back to like Joan was saying, if you if you bring it back to to just the pureness of I have a life purpose. And what is my purpose? And why did I choose those circumstances so that they feel fulfill the purpose that I as a soul came here to experience? When we bring it down to that one understanding, then everything else just falls away. Of, oh, I see everybody's here on a soul level, having a soul experience. Mm-hmm. And there's no judgment about any of it. Right. That's beautiful. I, I was listening to Dolores Cannon. And she said, because of infinity, you have, you will have the experience of being white. You will, with black, you will have the experience of being black, being white. You'll be, have the experience of being a rock, a flower, a tree, everything. You will have that experience of that. And then that which reacts to that, for instance, the flower, beautiful rose, the human walks over, ah, smells the rose. So you will be the rose. You are, you are that. I love that thought of thinking because then you see the world completely different. You think, is that my grandmother over there? That red rose, or <laughs> we don't we we play with those little things, or or we've heard that when a red cardinal shows up, that that's somebody from the other side just stopping by to say hi, or a butterfly. And it doesn't matter. You don't have to prove that it's true. If that's your reality and you want to believe that's true, then so be it. If it makes you feel good, so be it. Because to me, when people are struggling with their spirituality, I say, just pretend it's real. Just pretend that if you focus on something and you are grateful in advance, that it will happen because it does, mm-hmm. right? We, we, that's the process of manifestation. But, well, that can't work for me. And then you get, well, just pretend, pretend, pretend that this pen is a magic wand and, ooh, and you can just have anything you want because you can say things like that to children and they'll believe it and then watch what happens. Uh, there's a, a song. I don't know if you remember this song, uh, Joan, called, called Scarlet Ribbons. Remember that old song? I peeked in to say goodnight. Oh, my God. That's. And I saw yes. my child in prayer. Yeah. And she prayed for scarlet ribbons, scarlet ribbons for her hair. Right. Um, yeah, and then, song. yeah. And then in the end, it says. And so it talks about how the the singer's just in pain because he can't afford the scarlet ribbons. And he walks in on her bed and gave her a vision. Lovely ribbons lying there. Lovely ribbons, scarlet ribbons. If I live to be a hundred, I will never know from where came the ribbons, scarlet ribbons. So the child, a child can pray for something. And there's so much power in that because there's no doubt in their mind that it will manifest and people will whatever story after story after story of children who pray for things. And I have a a great example that happened here. When I first moved to San Angelo, I know the power of children and it had, it was a drought. It hadn't rained in forever. We're in West Texas and, so I, I got these children drumming. We got drums out. We were at a place called the Chicken Farm here, which is this big artistic community. And, and I said, okay, let's pray for rain. 
And so, so we all sang, let it rain, let it rain, dear God, let it rain. Then we would do, thank you, God, for the rain. Thank you, God, for the rain. And we were hitting these drums, and it was a drought. And I am not kidding you, at 3 o'clock, everybody saw it because we were in the courtyard. And at 3 o'clock that afternoon, it just went, whew. And everybody, we all were under these awnings and this little six-year-old girl was in the middle of the courtyard saying, it worked, it worked, we made it. <laughs> and I said, yes, we did. And so I was putting on a children's concert the next weekend and I had to go on television and I had just moved here. And I told people, make sure you bring your umbrellas to the concert because we're going to make it rain. <laughs> And it was August in the middle of a drought. And the, did it rain? Of course. It, 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 at the concert? At the concert. Did it, it rain. It, what happened at the concert, we, we sang again for the rain. And the dark clouds started showing up. And it rained for two weeks. My husband was drilling an oil well. And he said, can you turn it off? We're trying to move the rain. <laughs> so I didn't think of that. It rained for two weeks wow. after we did wow. that. It did. Because so, the children knew. And when you know, when you know, not believe, not hope, not please, if you get a chance, can you make it rain? None of that. You say, I've got the power. I know I have the power. I know I'm one with God. Hey, God, let's make it rain. You know, that's, that's reminding me of the, the faith of a child, right? They just, they do. So kids haven't learned doubt yet. Doubt is something that they learn through a life experience or from their parents or it's educated into them somewhere. They, their, their hearts are so pure. Right. And so full of awe and wonder. And it's, it, 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 call it faith. It has nothing to do with religion. It's that they just there's no doubt. Doubt doesn't exist. Doubt is the biggest killer of dreams. The only reason things don't, don't occur for adults is because we doubt its possibility. But for kids, everything is magic. It's all magic. Everything is possible. It is. Everything and is possible. That's why they can create things that, you know, they, they can see interdimensionally because they haven't, the filter of fear and doubt hasn't been put over their minds yet. This world we're creating, we're trying to get rid of those filters. Right. How do we get rid of those doubt filters and those disbelief filters so we can go back to the purity of knowing what's really possible? Well, actually, Victoria, I wrote a song. It's in the ballet. And the words are, all things are possible with God. Life can be magical when you believe in God. Open your heart to the light. Know that you are loved. All things are possible with God. That's the chorus. Mm -hmm. And that's, so in my world, and what my message is, learn a song like that. Make up your own song if you have to. We opened up with, don't worry about a thing. Every little thing. When you get in that place, start singing what you want. Because a very wise saying, I think it was Anthony said, he who sings prays twice. Just start singing what you want. And the more you sing it, make it a mantra. Watch the miracle happen. Watch it rain like we did with the children. So let's go around one more time. And with our closing words, Victoria, what would you like to remind people of? Oh, I was just thinking about them making it rain. Yeah, that that we are all rainmakers in that sense. So it's not necessarily about the physical rain, but what is it that we want to have rain upon us and really focus on that yes. and no doubt. I mean, doubt, doubt is, doubt is a fear-based belief. So as you know, one of the things I, that I teach, I'm here to teach people a difference between fear-based beliefs and love-based truths and how to recognize fear disguised as love. And so all of those, pretty much everything we've been talking about in this conversation is that it's all, it's recognizing the fear-based beliefs within this human experience we're having so that we no longer are controlled by any of those fear-based beliefs. 
of doubt and fear and judgment and blame and resentment and uh, victimization. All of those are based in fear. <laughs> they all are. of them are based in fear. When we recognize that's all part of this old fear-based reality we're moving away from because we're creating a new world and this new yes, world, we are. fear does not exist. That's so right. it's about striking all of those words from our repertoire of language and replacing them with love instead. Love it. How about you, Joe? <laughs> well, you know, I think I started when you wish upon a star makes no difference who, what, where you are. <laughs> when you hold that consciousness of love of where you want to be, you can create your new reality. And, and oh, so that rhymed. Yeah. Yeah. Rhyme. We can, and, and so last night I was on Miracle Monday and it turned into an affirmation. I had everyone write down, what do you want to be healed of? And then we just turned it around and affirmed, I am well, I am happy, I am whole, I, I have, have a lot of vitality, my body works well, I am in complete and perfect health. So I say, let's just affirm what we want yeah. now and hold it. And when we're a collective, like the three of us sending it out and holding that space for everyone listening to this, that which you are seeking is seeking you. Oh, so my, that. I, yes. right? that which you are seeking or that which we are seeking is seeking us That's right. so let's just say we are magnets for miracles we are healthy wealthy and happy we are holding this consciousness of unity of love peace and freedom for each and every one of us and for our planet yeah you know, it's time to turn up your light folks turn it up crank it up turn it up <laughs> your turn light, it light. <laughs> Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. <laughs> Just turn up your light ever so bright. Oh, gosh, I love you girls. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you all for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Go to victoriareynolds.com, see what she has for you. She's a beautiful spiritual coach. Also, Joan of Angels does spiritual coaching. Joan of Angels.com. And if you like music, go to Cynthia Productions. That's my thing. Love y'all. Thank you. Thank you.